Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this beautiful winter barn. I'm going to be doing it step by step tonight. Let me show you some, from start to finish how to do it yourself. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas board. This is the Fredericks Mixed Media Boards. Um, I really have enjoyed using them. They're kind of new to me, but they've got, um, they're really absorbent. Um, so I'm liking it. And they've got a nice hard core so they don't warp like um, the cheaper like paper uh, boards do. They've got, I don't know what's in there, uh, MDF or something inside. Um, let's go over brushes really quick. Got a number 10 filbert, number 6 angle bright, a number 6 filbert, and a number 2 liner in the Aspen from uh, Princeton. They're our brush sponsor, so thank you to them for providing the brushes and for Fredericks for providing our canvas. Um, for um, the Princeton Velvet Touch Line with the red handles, I've got a quarter inch, three eighths inch angle, and then a three aught, a one, two, and four round. So just a variety of different round sizes because we've got all these little details in the barn. So I wasn't sure exactly which brush I would need. So I just kind of grabbed a variety of different sizes to get in there with those little lines around the doors and things like that. And then for our trees, we're going to just want a different stippler of some sort. I've got 3 8 inch and 5 8 inch different stipplers from their select line. So those will do the trees pretty well. And I think the larger ones will be mostly for the snow in the background. All right, let me go over colors. I've got Carbon Black, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, uh, Thalo Blue, Green Shade, and Ultramarine Blue. And then um, this is... Quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, medium, and light. And then this one is unbleached titanium and titanium white. I'm also going to put out some zinc white, um, but I'm going to use the fluid. And I'm not going to put it out yet because I'm just going to use it for the snow. This is glazing medium, a glazing li gloss glazing liquid from Golden. So, all right. How are you doing tonight, hon? I am doing fantastic. Doing okay? Yeah. Okay, good. How are you doing? Very good. good. Very good. We had a eventful day, so <laughs> puppy took down Mark's TV that he plays his Xbox. So well, maybe the universe was trying to tell you something. I don't know. <laughs> to get rid of the puppy? <laughs> maybe not. Okay. Oh, different message? Sorry. <laughs> Welcome guys. If you're new to our channel, we hope you stick around and subscribe. We're gonna be uh, doing one more show for 2020 and then we are going to be taking a couple weeks off and coming back in January so I'm looking forward to a little bit of a break although we do enjoy we're it's definitely going to be it's definitely weird when we get to a Saturday and we don't have a show because we do them so often uh, I always feel like I should be doing something <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to mix up a really pretty blue. This this is a lot of white. So if you want to just stick with the white, go for it. I'm going to make the white areas a little bit more blue just to give them a little color because um, it just seems very stark to me, that black, red, and white. But you could totally do this in like gray tones, um, just black, white, and red, and um, that's it. Uh, so if that's what you want to do, um, just leave out the color here and... Um, so I'm going to add just a little bit of black to this to gray out that blue slightly. So I do want it to be kind of a gray, but I do want a little bit of color. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that blue. There we go. So both blues will give me um, a really pretty uh, kind of just mid-tone blue. And I'm going to go just slightly more with the ultramarine blue to give it a little bit more of a slightly purple tint. And then... I'm going to leave that bright there and get my white. It's going. I'm going to want it more white than that. This is too bright. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there. I think that's probably good. Oh, with this canvas, I want to spray it so that... Uh, spray it, don't say it. So that it... <laughs> so the, Sorry. <laughs> 
so that it absorbs the paint better if you spray your canvas with a little bit of water when you're when it's first dry and you're just starting this is definitely too blue so i'm just going to wipe most of that off what that'll do is just kind of take off that blue and then i'm going to just grab just white and i'm just going to go back over and i'm going to mix it right on the canvas here it'll mix up just fine that blue paint is still wet so and i've already gone ahead and put in my barn um, Tuesday nights we don't really go into drawing much. T Saturdays we do a little bit more drawing, um, but Tuesday nights are kind of our, Mark Mark gets up at 4 a.m. so he doesn't. <laughs> we, mm -hmm. we try to get done in, in, in close, close to an hour as we can. So. And this time of year is Oak Island also. That doesn't so. leave room for a drawing. Sorry. So, But I have drawn a barn before. We've done several barns, so um, you could totally look up those or you can use the traceable uh, that we have on our Patreon page um, for patrons. So that's also available. It's only $2 a month and gets you all unlimited access to all of our traceables for all of our, well, I guess we've got close to 500 videos now, 400 and something of them are free on over 450, 460 are free on YouTube. The rest of them are for patrons. But yeah, so not a bad deal. No, we just played bingo last Saturday with our patrons. As yeah. a thank you to them for sticking with us through 2020. <laughs> yes, uh, we it were. It was a lot of fun. We were talking about it just before the show. That oh yeah, between the 12 days of Christmas and the uh, bingo. Giveaways, it was, yeah. It was over fifteen hundred dollars worth of prizes. I know. Given, yeah, out, we so. were kind of going over that. We we're like, wow, that you know, it kind of little by little, there it adds up. And that yeah. was just off the cuff. That wasn't actually putting pencil to paper and figuring out, but right, yeah, just so, kind of uh, off the tops of our heads. Right thank now. you so much to all of the Patreon supporters all year long. You guys are absolutely incredible. Yes, and thank you to our sponsors who yes. participated. We had Arteza, the Brush Guys. Um, Princeton was very generous. They gave a bunch of stuff, and they also gave things from their sponsors, so their, or their affiliates. So um, the paints from uh, De La Roni, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, um, and my Mary paints and um, Strathmore, those were all from Princeton. And then Fredericks gave a bunch of canvases, cases of canvases. Fredericks canvases, very, they're <laughs> always very generous with their giveaway stuff as well. They always give big, you know. <laughs> they, uh, and then uh, we had new, a couple of new sponsors, Hippie Crafter, which was um, new to me. I haven't used their paints yet. They've sent them to me. I just haven't got, gotten around to using them yet. But they um, gave away some canvases and, and paints and... Um, they're a small American company. Um, so it was nice. It was really nice. Um, I feel like I'm leaving somebody off. The Brush Guys, Princeton, Fredericks, Arteza. Did I say them already? Arteza gave some stuff. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Be sure to thank all of them. And you guys have left some really nice comments, too, about, about it. So we've... It wasn't enjoyed. without its hiccups, but we appreciate no. everybody's yeah. patience and, <laughs> and dealing with us since uh, yeah. just a small mom and pop shop. Yeah, yeah. But we're doing our best. It, so it, thank you. It went pretty well. It did. All and right. And we were on camera. What? And we were on camera. We were on camera during For bingo. bingo. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. It was fun. And right, Fitz Pickle was also on camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the star, I think. We tried to get Cashmere, our cat, on camera, but she figured out pretty, like, about 10 minutes before Mark started the show that something was up and she <laughs> moved away from the camera. So she's she's got a sixth sense about the camera. So. Mm. All right, so I'm going to use the same blue down here for this area. I think this is going to be not the quite the right color, but we're just going to go ahead and put it because I've got it here. Might as well use it. I've got, you know, all this mixed up, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it 
down here and then we will we'll be adding other colors on top of the snow and we're going to be adding some trees and things too so just going to use this all down in here and I'm going side to side with the sky I kind of did it mm, sort of at an angle slightly kind of maybe looks sort of slightly cloudy but um, for the snow I'm going to kind of do it um, side to side horizontally so that it creates these kind of banks of snow that you see you know where the snow kind of could you tell us which brush you're using again? This is the 10 filbert, the large filbert, just kind of. In the grab. Aspen series? In the Aspen, yeah. And the thing I like about the Aspen, I've been using them more and more because they're they're firm, but they hold together pretty well. You can see how sometimes the firm brushes don't hold together. They kind of get fuzzy after a while. Um, but these do a really good job of, they hold their shape really well, even after I'm pushing them around um, a lot. And they're flexible too, which, you know, that's kind of the gold standard for me is like they need to be flexible enough that I can like push and bend them a little bit. Because if they're, if they're not flexible at all, they'll just kind of skip around instead of like flexing like this. It would kind of push out every time I lifted my brush and I don't want that, it to do that. I want it to kind of flex and bend f with me as I'm painting. And then... Um, but they're also sturdy enough that I can really get in there and scrub with them and I'm not going to damage them. So you really don't want to like scrub with a brush like this. It's got a softer bristle and finer hairs because then you can break those hairs off and then um, it'll be fuzzy and not really stick together and do the things you want it to do later. All right, so I'm going to go back through here and just kind of make sure that I have good coverage on here. I've kind of gone down to my tree line with this but I'm gonna have this is really gonna be pretty much solid trees down here I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this blue down here though just to cover okay there we go and that covered pretty well with my first coat I'm gonna go ahead and it's I think it's I think it's dry enough this the I, the one thing I do like about these new canvases from Fredericks is they dry pretty quickly but not so quickly that you can't blend with them so you know it's kind of a I, I do and I do think they're good and they absorb that paint really well okay there we go So I'm going to get a little bit of the white, a little bit more water, maybe a little bit. Actually, let's get use a little bit of glazing medium. That'll kind of make our white a little bit more transparent. I'm just going to kind of go up here and put the suggestion of some clouds in. I'm not going to actually like paint in clouds, but I'm just going to kind of wisp out some of this sky color so that it maybe looks like that white is blowing in just a few places. Oh, you see how dark that got? I didn't realize how dark that was in my brush. Um, one of the things that you'll notice um, uh, it, with, a, with the heavy body acrylics is that they dry dark, darker. So if you put a color on onto a dry surface and you can't, and you can't see it, then it's going to dry a little bit darker because <laughs> it's not the same color. Like you can mix up the same, what you think is the same color and put it on and it it looks like it disappears into the canvas and you're like okay I'm good I'm good I mix that color but then when it dries it's going to be a little bit darker so just go slightly lighter than you think you need and then that will be probably closer to what you want if you're trying to mix it exactly the same all right there we go so we've got some kind of sweeping sweeps going on here we get a little bit more of that white a little bit more of the glaze so there's been an in come out from the barn and right around the tree line here I'm going to come in and and get a little bit more of that blue or that white down low. What there's, there's been a an eternal question okay. which is can you have enough brushes? No. No. If you have to ask then you shouldn't be doing art. <laughs> Cuz the obvious answer is no, you can have, never have too many. Mm -mm. No, I really, I have a problem with it. I do. It's an issue for me. 
I mean, your brushes should be equal to or more than your shoes. <laughs> That's a good rule of thumb. I approve of that. Did I buy a new pair of shoes? Well, I need a new brush. <laughs> Gotta keep it even. But the good thing is that the brushes fit in the stockings better. And they're much cheaper <laughs> <laughs> than a pair of shoes. <laughs> So, well, depending on depending on the brush, <laughs> I should say they a lot of times are much cheaper. All right. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Got a really pretty soft blue, but it's like a gray blue. It's not too bright. I, I like it. I think it'll work good for us. All right. So let's go ahead, and I'm not going to clean up my brush. I'm just going to grab some of that brighter white here. And I'm going to dry brush it over the top of this snow that I've got back here. I'm going to try to get it in here without. I'm just going to go over this far snow area. And then there's a closer one here. And you can see how that blue underneath just gives it a little something to work with so that there's a little bit of a contrast for that snow in that snow if you didn't have that blue underneath it would just kind of disappear now if you didn't have the blue you could use gray um, I could use the ultramarine blue and and burned umber gray or any of those would work um, we got a question about the brush okay uh, is there any specific reason why you're using the filbert to do the background yeah the um, I like the filberts for um, for landscapes because they're softer they're with the rounded tip. They just, um, like for clouds and things, they kind of just give a little bit of softer look. If I was using a square brush, um, it just gives a hard edge sometimes that's a little harder to clear out, you know. So when I'm brushing with this, it's even if even if I see the brush stroke, it's gonna it's gonna have that little bit of softer roundness to it. That's that's the reason why I use it. Okay, so just kind of going back in here now. And just creating some different little planes of snow. If you wanted to, you could create kind of a, maybe let's leave a little bit of it dark here, darker here, coming out of the barn, like maybe there's a little bit of a road or path right there. Let's do that. I'm going to get a little bit more of that blue. And just leave a little bit of a path going out this way at an angle. There we go. made that blue back there a little bit darker so that there'd be a little bit of contrast when I put this foreground in okay and I left a little bit darker right there for when where that barn comes out oops I keep covering that path on either side so just a little bit darker kind of on the sides of the barn as well Looks good. I'm just trying to kind of let that dry. It's not quite dry. So let's go ahead and work on the barn while that sky dries. And then we'll put in our trees. We'll put in our first layer on the barn. I'm going to grab the 3 8 inch angle for that. And I need to turn that. I got glitter all over that with my Christmas tree. <laughs> I'm picking up glitter. <laughs> got all over it. What'll work good in the snow. It was cute, but he's very glittery. Yeah, true, true. Guess you could. Um, all right. Let me see here. So I think what I'm gonna do with this barn 
is because there's all these like little stripes i think what i'm going to do is go like a, with a darker tone underneath and then we'll put a lighter uh lighter highlights on um kind of dry brush those streaks in the barn and then those dry the dark color will kind of peek through so i'm going to use the quinacridone magenta and the cadmium red medium and make a really bright kind of dark cherry red pretty much equal parts here of those two reds and then I'm going to add the black and I'm not going to need a whole lot of black so maybe like one part black to four parts red and look at even that little bit of black was way too much so I'm going to pull that out I wanted to mix up a lot more of this okay somewhere in there that's kind of that barn red that I'm looking for okay now we got it I got way more of this color than I'm going to need but that's okay yeah there we go so it's kind of a really nice dark red but it still looks red it's not it's not too so dark that it looks black the dark burgundy My brush out and get some of these two and go over here and have a little bit of the brighter red to work into this paint because I feel like it might be a little bit too dark in some places so it's real dark right here where that Eve is coming over overlapping but like right in here this is in the middle of it it's gonna be getting lots of Sun over it. Dang it. I looked up. <clears throat> wow, that was not something you want to do. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Our, although we're going to put trees there, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm okay. Well, at least our plan worked. What plan? Making a mistake accidentally, air quotes, uh -huh. to show everybody how to fix it. True. You are a pro to make it look like, you know, it just was a real okay. accident. Accidentally did that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you remember your nail, nail color? It's called Mary and Cranberry. Mary and Cranberry? Mm-hmm. It's really pretty, too. It's a little bit pinker than this red, but... Very shiny. Yes, it's very shiny. Very. Okay, you see how I'm turning it? This doing that helps me get a better angle on the board. I just set my paint down in that wet paint, my hand down in that wet paint over here. Make sure I'm not getting on my sleeve. That little red right there is that part of the roof that's sticking out right there, so that's supposed to be there. Really, I need to be putting this on kind of side to side. So if I do have streaks, they kind of look like they're part of that barn. And make sure that when I'm, as I'm doing this over here, that I'm kind of feathering out these edges. Because like I had right here, when I made that mistake here, I had like a little bit of a hard edge right here. And it, it dried a little bit lumpy right there. So I'm trying to kind of smooth that out. But it's probably going to show on the upper layers some it's it's not a huge deal but i do like to kind of be aware of how those layers are going to lay on top of each other and if you have like a straight line in here in the middle of your painting it sometimes can be seen in some lights you know when you angle it 
so to avoid that you just kind of feather out these edges where you're working on adding paint you know so that it doesn't dry hard before you get your next layer on This is good. This is a little bit closer to what I want. It's not quite as dark, but it's still dark enough that it's going to be a nice undertone for our highlights. Cleaning my brush out a little bit. A little bit more of that red. I'm kind of mixing that darkest red with my lighter tone a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use that dark red under here. By laying that long edge along that line, you get a lot, much straighter edge than if you, you know, tried to draw it in up and down. So you use that flat edge of your brush to create a straight line. I went in there with a little bit of water, too much water in my brush there, and it kind of just wiped off the paint right there. You don't ever want to add water to an area that's drying or it's got thicker paint, or you know, don't want to use a watered down layer over the top of a thicker layer because it'll just lift it while it's you know, at least while it's drying, when it's first set on there, just washing it off the canvas. This is where we need that music from Bingo Party. <laughs> Mark was like, let's play music during the Bingo Party. And I'm like, well, I'm going to get copyright strike for it, you know, 
if we do, he's like, oh, no, I don't. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Like, immediately afterwards, I got two emails about <laughs> using music. Yeah, like, it just finished cleaning up. Literally. And all these emails. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, okay. Well, that video is... So if you're looking for the bingo video, it's out. It's down because because we used music. <laughs> <laughs> Copyrighted music. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing was is that uh, yesterday, yeah, you know, I get to work early before all the traffic and all that and all the people to make sure I stay safe, socially distanced, and uh, so I make a coffee and I'll check YouTube and watch some videos. Before work starts and YouTube wasn't working for me. And then it was, but it was playing commercials. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no, I hope this isn't from the copyright field. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble. You can't use YouTube anymore. Oh, I don't know if I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I think it was down. Yeah, it was down on the. Yeah, the two. whole thing was down. Yeah, the whole thing was down for a little while on the 14th. Email, mm -hmm. YouTube, Drive, everything. Oh, really? Google? Yep. Everything Just was Google down. Google's down, huh? Yeah. Interesting. I'm sure they didn't enjoy that. They were, mm -hmm. I'm sure, sure. So people got woken up in the middle of the night for that. <laughs> okay. So this is dry now up here, this background. I'm going to get a smaller filbert here. And I think I'm going to do some of the trees with the filbert and some of it with the stippler. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm going to spray that red to keep it from drying out on us while we're waiting. And I'm going to use the brown. And this is the burnt umber. And the, oops, ultramarine blue. And just a tiny bit of the quinacridone magenta. They're kind of um, they're kind of purple. So I figured we could use a little bit of the just slowly adding the blue and the magenta in because I don't want it too obviously purple. So starting with the brown, we can kind of control it a little bit. There we go. And then I can see what color I have on my undertone just by adding some white to it. Okay, that's pretty. So that's going to have both the blue from the background and a little bit of the reddish color from our barn. It will unify that tree area really nicely for us. And I do want to have a little bit of that blue sky color left to work with. So let me... Grab a palette knife real quick. Here, I'm going to mix up a little bit more. I didn't want to dirty up a brush for it. Too much. Okay. All right, so that'll be. Ultramarine blue. So, how easy do you think this painting is? Um, it's going to have a lot of little lines. So, if that's something that you don't feel comfortable with, you know, I would say. It's that that part's going to be more difficult. Is the little lines and things that are going to be in it. The background is super easy, okay. you know. But yeah, the. And how advanced of a painter do you need to be to hold multiple brushes in different hands while you're doing it? <laughs> As you're doing it, I don't know. Um, okay, I'm looking for. I really kind of need another one of these. I'm going to get a, another. Filbert here. Let me get the short filbert. 
the six or the four fill short fill over. All right, I'm gonna get the blue, the white here, and I'm just gonna mix it. Let's see if any of this is now. It might be a little bit. Mix a little bit of that blue here with it. Okay, so I'm gonna use this for my blue sky color to blend in, and I have it just a little bit lighter than my darkest tone here. I want it to be kind of whitish. And then I'm gonna use this for my trees here, and I'm gonna go fairly dark down here on this bottom of the snow line. So I'm gonna go across here, and this is all fairly solid. And since this background is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it lightly. Um, make sure that this is all dry. You don't wanna do this if the painting's wet, but I'm just gonna activate that. The water on there will just kinda give me a little bit extra time to blend as I put this paint down. Just. Okay. I'm going across with that dark color and before this line dries I need to blend it up and I really could have done this when I did my sky I just I didn't I didn't want to mess with it yet I hadn't mixed this color yet so just wanted to put the sky in first and then do this part Go right up to that barn roof, around it. And if you wanted to, you could do this, like, you could do it, um, the whole background, and then do this, you know. So I'm going to get some of this blue sky color, and I'm just going to start blending it into this brown. And that's going to fade out that top. I'm going to go back to this color, blend back some more into it. And I'm just trying to kind of create a soft, smoky blend there between these trees. This is going to make it look kind of blurry in the background by doing this. Um, it's not exactly what's in the photograph, but I just kind of wanted to make it a little bit more painterly and make it a little bit more maybe accessible for, you know, beginners. This is... I don't know, I just like the look of this kind of painting. So um, if you wanted to, you could do the whole thing with kind of one of these brushes too. So I'm gonna get some of this lighter of the, of this tree color and I'm gonna stipple that. I'm gonna go right up over the barn right there. And now that that's kind of blended out a little bit, I can use this and it'll give the top edge of it just a little bit of a fluffiness. And just try to kind of think about where my individual trees are. Maybe there's some bushes in here in the front that are a little bit darker than others. So getting a little bit more of that darker color and blending back in. You could use a uh, the Willis Blender or Blender from the Velvet Touch line. I didn't pull mine out, but that would um, be about the same shape and texture as this aspen that I'm using here. So if you go over the snow, don't worry about it because we can go over that, no problem. So just kind of go quickly, work. Okay, I'm, I'm, oh shoot, I just took my hand in it. Um, I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and move over here. And we'll do this side here. Let's spray everything again, just keep it activated. Make sure my brush is not drying out while I'm doing that. If you're slower than I'm, I am, you can clean these brushes out in between, but I'm going fairly fast here, so since they're not drying out on me. So start out with your darkest color. Lay that in all the way across. Bring it up. And 
Oh, almost to the bottom of the roof line there, right? And then get your blue. And this is that lighter blue. It's not, it's not as, it's got a lot of white in it. I'm going to go over the top and it's going to pick up that wet paint a little bit. This is where I was saying that I wouldn't have to worry about that paint right there because I'm going over it right like this. Okay, pick up some of that paint, pull it up, maybe make a tree that's a little bit larger right here. Okay, then going back to this brush, pulling some of that darker color again back up. If you're feeling like, you know, you're not laying down any color, you can just wipe your brush out, pick up some of that darker color and pull from the bottom up. Sometimes that brush gets, you know, it picks up the color that that blue or whatever and uh, just like them no matter how much you you try to blend it it just won't blend well that you probably just need to wipe your brush clean a little bit and press that bright paint around there's plenty of paint on the canvas now to work with so I'm just going to go back through here and before this dries I want to And see how the, the filberts are creating these nice, fluffy, um, rounded shapes. I'm keeping my brush brushes painted uh, pointed upward so that any of those brush strokes that show are, are creating the bush shapes for me. So, like that. Let's see. And then I'm going to take this brush here, get a little bit more of that paint color and blend it in right in there create that nice soft fluffy trees and I'm looking at my line here so I'm going to bring this side up just a little bit Get a little bit more water down you want to keep this brush dry I wet these two brushes when I was starting but not this one the Deerfoot stippler you want to keep dry. I'm going in with a little bit lighter color, just adding a little highlight to some of the tops of these trees and kind of shaping out the shapes of them a little bit. I'm going to go over this one with the blue. I'm going to soften that all up. Doing this too kind of creates that foggy, like, like snowy feeling too. I think it's just a really pretty way of doing these trees. It gives that kind of weathered soft look. It's a snowy morning. See that? So I'm just going back over the tops of all these trees with that Sky blue. Now, if your sky blue did not match up enough, you know, and like you see an obvious line, which could happen if you didn't, you know, like if you, like me, didn't have exactly the same color left, you know, from your sky, um, just add it a little bit more up into your sky. So um, just take it, glaze it a little bit. So get a little bit of that glazing medium so you're thinning it out. And then just pull it up into your sky, into some other areas. Um, I'm not seeing a, an obvious line, but it definitely could have happened. So, um, and you know, you don't want this line of d a different blue, you know, <laughs> right at your tree line. Um, so, if that happens, just glaze that up into your um, other sky, and then it'll blend it with it and look like it always was there. So, all right, let me. Um, Get a little bit more snow. Going to patch up these areas where I went over with this color and just kind of soften that up. And here too. Just going through with white here. 
Okay, and then on top of all this, I could leave it like this. I kind of like it. Um, if I want to take it up another notch, I can go in here and get some of this color with my liner brush. I get a little bit of white. You need to add a lot of water when you use the liner brush. So just add it until you don't feel it pulling against your brush. So until you can like basically can't feel the paint there. All right, and so then I'm gonna go down. Now this is the tree line that's right in front of this. And I am going to just put a bunch of branches in here. A bunch of branches just right in front along that ridge line right there that's right in front of the far trees and some of them are going to come up over i'm not going to go all the way up with these though i just kind of want to create a little extra detail down here I'm not putting them all, all the way to the bottom there. Some of them are kind of coming up a little bit from it. sure if I like this as much as just the plain old trees in the background really honestly I, I mean it, it's 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 fine it is what it is right I kind of almost like this better just simpler did make it kind of the similar color to that background trees so that they it would kind of blend in a little bit so you don't have to see it resolved you know it just kind of disappears into those trees got a question mm -hmm. they would like to know <clears throat> if the rule about water to paint ratio is the same when you're using a liner brush um, yeah, you can you can um, you can add a little bit of glazing medium if you want to. I usually do. I just didn't this time. But yeah, you can if you're worried about now. And this it, this is going to be kind of pretty much my last layer on on the trees. So I'm not worried as much about the you know if I was putting several other layers on top of the trees, then I would for sure be more concerned about you know. Um, making sure that that paint sticks really well and isn't um, going to underbind when I did that. But, you know, this is bare trees, so I'm not worried about that. Getting some white coming up and just making sure that I have white up underneath those trees. And I'm going to get a little bit of the light purple and just kind of go in here and smoke up the background, add a little bit of a kind of darker color to that line of ridge line of trees back there. Just fading it out a little bit. Then anywhere where it looks a little bit harsh, just kind of going back over it with a little bit of that background color. Can you see what I'm doing there? Kind of just smudging it slightly, using that 
color just going to smudge it out. And I don't have a lot of paint in my brush. I'm just I'm really dry brushing this on. So if you have too much paint, it's going to be super obvious. I just want to kind of muddy up the waters back here and just kind of soften up those tree limbs. You're doing a lot of trees this week. I am, yeah. Just did our bonus video. We should show that. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I did a ton of trees for this one. <laughs> it was all trees. <laughs> lots and lots of trees and lots of grass, <laughs> too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was fun. And then we did Fitz Pickle for the $10 level. That was a $5 level uh, for the landscape. And then this one was the $10 level for a little puppy. This was pre, uh, pre-TV breaking, pre- <laughs> <laughs> pre-house training too. So I, I don't want to, he was super cute, but I definitely don't want to go back to that. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's a win. I think they're so cute so that you don't kick them out right away <laughs> when they pee on your floor. <laughs> it's a survival mechanism. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to use just a little bit of this dark purple, or the, you know, the purple that I was using on the trees, and I'm going to use it in my path right here. I mean, the littlest bit, very lightly, just kind of. Maybe creating a little story there. Some, something going on. Get some of the blue, white. Go over. Just blend it in a little bit. Okay. Subtle, subtle, very subtle. All right, let's get this roof on here. So I got a little bit of the snow on my barn there. That up. Let's go ahead and let that dry. you see I'm seeing just a little bit of not too bad of the canvas showing through sometimes you get these little white pockets where the paint just didn't absorb down in on your first layer and so be sure to if you see any of those areas you can just add a little water to your paint and uh, paint that over the top and it'll seep down into those little cracks and into those little white spots and fill them in Ooh, I've got these little parts of the barn in here I need to get. It's probably not the right brush for this. It's not working very well. Everybody doing okay? Every, every 
Buddy is doing great. Good. Somebody asked if there is a difference between a floating medium and a glazing medium. Is there a floating medium? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, floating medium, I would think, is for um, your craft paints. That's that's usually what you know they come with your kind of thinner craft paints. So I'm not sure exactly how um, it would. I'm sure you know they're all acrylic, so I'm sure it would be fine with the heavy body paints. Huh? Yes, folk art. Folk art, yeah. So that's that's generally a craft quality, uh, you know. The interweb look. says that it eases the floating of highlights and shades in your watercolor paintings. Mm. Well, watercolor, but so. acrylic paintings too, but yeah. Okay. Um. Well, yeah, too. I mean, it, they're both, they basically do the same thing in essence. You know, you're just thinning out your paint color. Um, you're thinning out your color to make it flow better. Glazing medium may be a little bit, um, I don't know, the floating medium might dry slower or maybe faster. I don't know. You'd have to try it. I honestly, I, I don't know. I, w without trying them side by side, I can't tell you how you know how they would be different is watching mediums dry just as exciting as watching paint dry <laughs> i don't know i haven't tried it like i said huh? mm, okay I'm not sure but yeah i don't i don't know each each brand has its own kind of qualities and i don't i don't use floating mediums so i just don't know how it compares I knew I do know that the glazing this glazing medium that I use has um, an extender in it which makes it a little bit easier with heavy body acrylics. So but I tend to like to use, you know, so if you're using craft acrylics I would just use the same brand of, you know, mediums as you're using in your paints. Then you don't have any issues. Although with their all being acrylics, it shouldn't be a problem. They should all be compatible. By going around the white areas, it'll save me some time when I'm putting my <laughs> my trim on. I won't have as much. Well, I mean, I, I'm gonna paint it, but it'll be it'll already be kind of there, so it'll be a little bit easier, I think. You won't have as many layers to cover because you're not gonna have to cover that red, except for in a spot, few spots where. That went over onto it. Okay. There we go. Let me get my. I'm going to use this color from the trees to use on my roof. The darkest tone. Maybe add just a touch of black to it. A little bit more brown maybe. Do 
just putting this dark color underneath. We're going to put lots of snow on top of this, but we need that dark contrast underneath it. Shingles are kind of following the the line of the roof here, so just kind of going across. I'm going to go ahead and tap through this wet paint and kind of create that indication of some shingles in this. It's just going to kind of pull off some of that color and leave a little bit of highlights here and there. So, you know, just slightly thinning out the paint as I go through to go back over this. And creating that texture in the roof line. Does it make sense? See, just by kind of tapping through that wet paint. I'll do the same thing when I do my snow, but it'll already kind of have a little bit of on there. I'm going to go ahead and go across the top of the roof. Now this is the, I, I would say that being, whenever you're working with like a really light background like this and you know such contrast, you've got this dark color going over the top, it can, it can be a little bit tricky so I would say this part of it, you know, is probably one of the harder parts, just getting the paint on here without messing up your background. You know, you have to have a really steady hand on these type of areas here because it's a really obvious contrast. Now, you could smudge it a little bit and make it a little bit more painterly-like, and that's totally fine. So you could go through and kind of, as you do it, just kind of dab that line so that it goes on a little bit softer, a little bit smudgier, kind of like oil painting, you know, where they go back in and kind of blend over areas to soften those lines. Acrylics have a hard line um, compared to oil paint. That's one of the, you know, they're really easy to create these really s solid separations between colors. Sometimes if you don't want that, you can just kind of Go back through and kind of tap over and smudge out that separation between the two colors. You could also use a little bit of that blue and go over the line with a little bit of the blue and just smudge out the line that way. So a couple different ways of doing it. All right, using white now and just kind of mixing that in as I went and blend, blending it into the dark to make a little bit of a gray. Give me a little color underneath my barn there. And then I'm going to get a little bit of that darker color. And I'm going to go through here. Add with the edge of the brush here. that outer border of the barn. I'm going to go ahead and go over the white here. Using that gray to kind of give it a softer tone and then I'll go back over it with white just like we did the snow, you know, just kind of using the light gray as an undertone. I'm 
doing? Oh, I'm making good time, actually. I mm -hmm. wasn't sure. All right, so I got a little bit of the, got a little outside the line there. So I'm just gonna get some of the darker color and just kind of tap back over that and blend that out a little bit. And then I'm gonna start to kind of add the snow to this part of the roof. Now there is a kind of a line through the underside of that border. And this seems to be doing okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with it, I guess. I'm gonna wall these are these are getting dry on here. I'm just gonna make sure they stay wet so I can wash them out really well. You don't want that paint to dry out in your brush while you're finishing another part of your painting. Okay, I'm gonna dip right into that middle of that white there. And I might add just a slight bit of blue to this since we've got that blue tone going on. I think that blue will help and sell it as snow, you know, since we got the blue in the rest of our snow. So this upper part is mostly white. Make it a little bit darker than it's in the picture just so that you can see it against that sky. disappears into the sky in our picture. Just gives it a little bit more contrast. Okay, then I'm gonna get that brightest white. I'm just going to go all the way across here. Just go in lines. Hey, little bitty lines. And pay attention to the line. So it should match up this line and this line. So by the time we get to the bottom, it should be matching this line. This one is actually, these down here are not lined up like they are at the top. It's kind of more bigger, more bigger. <laughs> bigger sweeps of snow. And then had a good question. Mm -hmm. So we noticed that your uh, water is tinted from the paint that's in it. Right. Does that get caught up in the brush when you rinse it off and then change the colors? It, it could somewhat, but not not enough to. I'm I'm not. I don't have enough of that paint of water in there to. If I was creating a wash, then yes. Like if I was going through here and gonna make a line of of white somewhere and then you know the main color was and I had to add a lot of that water then yeah it would probably need to be cleaned out because you would notice it but with the little bit of water that's left in my brush it's not it's not affecting that paint it's not like watercolor where you're you know you're using washes of color and you really have to keep your water clean with watercolor Acrylics is not as much of an issue. Okay, so just kind of going through here and creating those banks of snow on my roof. Now that I've got my line of shingles kind of 
going back there and kind of messing them up a little bit, softening that up, just kind of like I did the trees, you know, just kind of going back over and just making some little, a little more natural looking. I'm going to use a little bit more white here down toward the bottom. Just keep on adding layers. White tends to kind of pick up under the undertones as it dries. It seems like it, to me, it uh, changes, it shifts a little bit as it dries. So you may have to go over, you know, several times to get your white as bright as you want it. I'm going to get some white here. I'm going to use that on the roof. smaller brush now. I'm going to get the one round here. Or, no, this is the two round. Let me get the one. Well, no. We'll go ahead and use it too. i um, going to grab a little bit of black and a little bit of the roof color here. Make sure that's nice and dark and I'm going to put that in my windows. There's going to be window panes, but it's going to be easier just to paint the window panes over the top of this black than to try to paint in each little tiny little black square, I think. I'm going to put that in first. And I made this pretty dark, but I, I may go back over this once we put in our highlights on our, on our wood, on our barn so before I do my the rest of my white trim I'm going to go ahead and put in my highlights on my actual barn so I'm going to get a little bit of the cadmium red light and the cadmium medium cadmium red medium and I'm just going to go through here and make sure my brush is the right width for these barn slats and really need to make sure that I'm also paying attention to keeping them parallel to these lines here. So I've got all these lines going through here, 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 and I want to make sure that these slats are parallel with those lines so that it makes sense. Gonna be more obvious in this side where it's darker. And I'm gonna go in and shadow those back in, I think. Some of these, so be sure you're doing it on all the little bits. Some white here, mixing that in. I'm kind of skipping around too so that I'm not trying to line them all the way across. You know, I'm just trying to make sure that if any two are meeting up, that they meet up, you know, correctly. But just doing a few here and a few, you know, skip around and do a few over here and then skip down and do a few over here and they're getting too wide that brush is just not quite doing it so i'm gonna get a smaller brush oh, get I the think one round 
thought you were talking about my love handles. <laughs> You're getting a little wide. <laughs> yeah, all the holiday eating. I know. I think I've gained five pounds since Thanksgiving. Not quite, but close. It's not over yet. Better I had a salad today. I had some microwavable soup that I did in the microwave. That sounds gross. Hi, puppy. What you doing? Bits Pickles coming over to say hi. Here's tail hitting the wagging tail hitting the table. He's learning the studio thing though. He's you know, he's being pretty good. He's figuring it out. Yeah, he went back to your bed. Good boy. She's like she's not done yet. I know. <laughs> so cute. Alright, and then this one is also, we're going to follow the roof line here. So it's not going to be the same. This one's going to be this way. This one's going to be angled out a little bit. So I was following the line of the roof and windows as your guide. Can't really follow, you can't really follow the snow much this bottom line because the snow is maybe a little higher in places than others you know I'm going to use the unbleached titanium to mix the highlighted the areas because that's got a little bit of yellow in it yellow is better than just plain white for um, highlighting red having a little bit of a yellowed tone in your If you don't have that color, just add a little yellow of some sort, yellow oxide or something to your white, and it'll be a little bit more natural looking. Then it it won't be pink, you know. I don't know. There's probably a faster way of doing this, but. bigger areas is not I want to take out some of that darker color a little bit more than it is Some of that darker color I'm going to go right up underneath that there and here and along my door on the outside of my doors shadow in these areas again just make sure I've got a good dark area up in there Okay. 
do the same thing here. Really dark right there. Oh, no. No, good crowd. Everybody's just kind of... Just chilling. shopping for TVs. Oh, yeah. Did we already tell them what Fitzpickle did tonight? I don't think we did. did we? Yeah, you did. I did? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, at the beginning of the show. Cause I, cause I, so. It really wasn't his fault. It was my fault. Well, I didn't... It was like happening in slow motion, too. I was like, no. I'm trying to lunge like I dropped my tablet, I threw everything off, uh, everything off of me, and grabbed, tried to grab it, but it was, it was going down. I couldn't get to it in time. It's too far away. So we'll have one more winner in a giveaway, a slightly used TV. <laughs> no longer working. The crack screen. <laughs> Yeah, it looked fine. I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, like it didn't show any obvious signs on this on the front of it, you know. So I was like, okay, maybe it's all right. And then I turned it on and it was just like, <laughs> like nope. Yeah, when I turned it on to see how bad it was. <clears throat> yeah, it's bad. I unplugged it and brought it out to the garage. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's bad. It wasn't just like a little bit. It was like you can't even tell what's on the screen. Bad. <laughs> Unusable. Well. Oh well. Getting an extra present for Christmas there. <laughs> Such is life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, looks like I'll just have to use the big TV now. I wonder mm -hmm. what you're going to watch all your shows I've on. I've offered you multiple times to do that. I don't know why you've had that little TV. He thought, like literally had a little tiny TV next to, on the, on the, ottoman which is part of the reason why it fell over because it was not sturdy oh don't even blame the tv it's it, been there for years it was it years was, it was fine not. <laughs> been there for years well i i put it away when company comes over right I, for one, will be glad to see it go. <laughs> so are we sure the dog knocked it over? I'm just saying. <clears throat> I should have the camera on pretty. to see who actually knocked it over. <laughs> Oops. I piled the pillows up just strategically. I was like, okay, That's, if I do this you're so, just right. Such a bad dog. Then you when that? he jumps up on the couch, he'll push those pillows right <laughs> into the TV and knock it over. Yes. That's what happened. Because I'm known for my math skills. My physics game you're, is... You're calculating the angles and My physics game is, is on point. Forces and angles and all that. Exactly. I knew just where it was going to hit. <laughs> oh, well. Our friend Rob gave us a shout out today on his live stream. He said he watches sometimes just to listen to us chat. <laughs> he doesn't care about painting. <laughs> He's a musician friend named Rob McCormick. SGN Rob, I think, is some guy named Rob. Yeah. It's his YouTube channel. Check it out. But he's pretty. He's hilarious. It was a lot of fun. We lurk. We we're lurkers on his uh, Facebook feed. I told him. <laughs> yeah, he does a daily uh, tea time live stream across 
multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Takes requests. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and, and yes, this is the same dog that ate the Christmas tree. Just so everybody you knows. <laughs> somebody asked in chat, so just make sure we clarify that. <laughs> I found the perfect ornament for him, too. We should show the ornament that uh, we got of Pitts, for Pitts Pickle. We, we have an ornament for each of our animals that goes on the tree. And this is Fitz Pickle's it's first. Bounces, it? It's uh, towards the TV side, halfway. Uh, this is Fitz Pickle's first Christmas with us. He's he got his own ornament this year, and we found, I found the perfect ornament. Huh? Uh, he wants it too. He wants to chew on it. It says Feliz Naughty Dog. <laughs> yeah, that's that's him. And that's the thanks I get after going on my lunch hour to get that for I know, him. I know. And mm -hmm. then he ruins your TV the next week. <sighs> yeah. Chew on the TV. Chew on some of the Liam's books. Our grandbaby got a brand new book. And, like, we look down and he's chew chewing on that. He's, yeah. He's, uh... Get a dog, they said. <laughs> It'll be fun, they said. He's he's fun for me. I mean, you're gone all the time, so I'm the one that gets to hang out with somebody. At least I have somebody hanging Cashmere's out Cashmere's here for you. <laughs> she gets hair on everything. I can't cuddle with her. When I... When she can't breathe after she's been on me. So he's not as little cuddle as I thought he was going to be. He turned out to be quite a big dog. Mm -hmm. All right, using a little bit of that blue to just do the this part. I used a little bit of that gray on on uh, right here to kind of. I, sorry, I'm talking about the dog and not telling you what I'm doing. Yeah. Let's turn this into an art channel. Uh, somebody left me a really long email. I'm not going to tell you what it says, but it was all about, you know, how disappointed she was in our <laughs> talking. I'm like, well, sorry. She's like, well, some people seem to like it. I'm like, well, then don't just go find somebody else that doesn't talk. That gives you what you want. There's plenty of art channels out there. You don't have to tell me all the ways that you don't like my channel. It's not encouraging. It doesn't help me. Not going to change at this point. We've been doing this for how many years? I don't know. Several years. Several. Several. This, this is us. Yep. We're. And we thank for all the hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of people that click the like button. And do, yes, and do appreciate us. So we we don't take that for granted. You guys are the best. And for every negative comment, I know there's a ton of yep. positive comments out there. So I appreciate those who take the time to do that, you know. The, to like, the, these are the same people that come up to you, complete stranger in a store when you're pregnant, and offer you advice. Right, right. And it's like, so, uh, <laughs> I don't know you. But I'm going to give you some advice. Right. Right. I haven't painted for 14 years, but I'm going to tell you all the ways why I wish you would do different things, you know, things differently. I'm like, well, I, you know, I, you know, I try to, I try the, we try the best we can to provide a good, you know, the best, uh, instruction that I can give while also in enjoying myself because this you know we do eight videos a month <laughs> and he times that by you know 12 we're doing and that's just the YouTube ones and we're doing two two more a month for patrons so we're doing at least 10 Sometimes less on certain months when we take Tuesdays off, but most of the time 
we're doing about 10 videos a month. So, you know, that's 120 videos and 120 paintings start to finish, finished in a live stream. You know, it's not... Uh, it's okay. It's easy to burn out, is what I'm saying. I've been there, done that with, with you know, with my painting career. I've been painting for 30 plus years now. And there, there have been times when I, you know, when I was doing decorative painting and just painting and painting and painting and I didn't really listen to myself we you know I was doing it kind of to make extra money for our family and I had little you know small kids and then I got pregnant and then I was just like you know what I'm done and I stopped painting for about a year and then I did Spencer's nursery and then we went to France a couple a couple of years later I kind of painted dabbled a little bit then we went to France, and I got inspired to start painting again. You know, so it I know I've burnt out before, and so I know what I need to not do that. And so Mark having having Mark here in the studio helps me stay entertained and engaged and not burn out because there's only so many times you can say the same thing over and over again. You know about um, painting process. So it it does. Um, it's for my mental health. So you may not like it, but I do. <laughs> it's it's all what that. I need. <laughs> and so we really appreciate all the wonderful feedback that you know these people who've been with us for years. Right. And we love seeing the art and that you know you've been inspired to to paint again and, and challenge yourself and do stuff and so yes it's it's why i do it i i love it i love painting and i know how much it's enriched enriched my life it was it was i had to come back to it you know and i i stopped for a while because i was burned out but i came back to it because i love it and i can't not do it you know so i just had to find a new way of doing it and stay engaged with the process and this is Really, teaching I think is part of it for me because I'm I'm an extrovert. I need to be around people, and even though we're not doing this in person, I still feel that connection with our audience. You know that there's people out there we're communicating with. You know, and it kind of fills that need. So we appreciate you. I know we appreciate the time that you guys take to And live streaming is the way to do it. Yeah, it is. It it just it it connects us in a way oh, yeah. that recordings don't. You yeah. know, and I know we get comments too about, you know, our videos are super long. Well, that's because I'm finishing it in one setting, you know. Mm -hmm. If I was doing a recording, I would be able to stop and start and, you know. Right. We did I that would. for a little while. We showed little bits and pieces and all that, but you don't get the full effect and you don't get to see Angela work through some issues and problems. Right. So, yeah. And yeah. I just enjoy the live aspect of it. I just yeah. like to be connected with people in real time. You know, there's just something really special about it. And when we're done, the lights go off and we're done. Right. We don't right. have to sit and edit video for four Another six, five hours. Eight, yeah. Hours. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the best part of it. I do not. I'm not very good at editing. I don't like it. All right, going around the windows here using my white. I feel like the white's a little bit bright, so I probably am going to come back in and kind of dirty it up a little bit in spots. But it's going on pretty well, um, and I definitely think painting around it was the way to go because it's covering that red, you know, in the few areas where it's showing. It's not. It's not being an issue. We've got enough of the white there to know where to put the white or enough of the white showing to be able to paint around it. So sorry we got on that soapbox. I'm not really sure why, but mm -hmm. well it yeah, never mind. I'm just gonna move on. It's just Yeah. So you gotta okay. you gotta I've learned you've got to pay attention to the positive and just let the negative kind of, if it's constructive and if it's from somebody that, you know, you care about their opinion, then I'll listen. But, at the, you know, if it's just some random person that I don't know that hasn't put anything into my life of value, then I'm not going to give them the time to 
be able to right. change my whole life, you know, my whole life, <laughs> just because they don't like it. I don't know who they are. <laughs> and that's the same for yeah. anything, not just right. being, you know, everybody has that in their life. They'll have somebody oh, who absolutely. feels like they need to give you advice and all that. And, and, you know, if you don't, you know, have a relationship with the person and, you know, it's just words. Well, yeah, and it can be an, it can be discouraging, especially when you're trying your hardest to do your best at something, and then you have somebody, some random person coming in and you know throwing <laughs> throwing shade on it. You're like, uh, but it happens to everyone. And I was actually just watching. Just this is a totally random observation, but I was just watching earlier today um, the. Bee Gees uh, documentary about the Bee Gees and how at the height of their success they became like the most hated band in America because they had so much success that people started hating on disco because they kept hearing their songs over and over again so much it got overplayed and and there was a huge disco backlash you know and uh I just thought, yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. And and they had interviews from, like, Coldplay and, and different artists who, you know, observed or, you know, have been there, done that, you know, with just been in the limelight and had, um, we have, like, I'm not saying we are the as popular as Bee Gees. Not, that's not what I'm meaning. I'm just meaning that it doesn't matter what level you're at, you're going to have crit- <laughs> critics, <laughs> you know, whether it's us or... You know, and the more successful you are, the harsher your critics seem to be, you know. So just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody needed to hear that tonight. <laughs> let it let it roll off your back, everybody. If you're getting critics, then maybe you're doing something right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, going in here with that darker color, just shadowing the bottom of these windowsills. Give them a little shadow and around the sides, too. That yeah, there were a would, bit of dimension there. What? Well, last week, a new rocket from the uh, SpaceX, Elon Musk, you know, took off and they landed. It was a whole test thing, and it crashed and burned on Exploded landing. On landing. But you know, Elon is is got an interesting philosophies, which is you know, if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. And that was an interesting statement. You know, those who. Don't fail. Maybe aren't trying hard enough. Aren't pushing the boundaries. Aren't doing mm, things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you get out there, and and you know, we know a lot of people. Sometimes they're not. You know, the painting doesn't turn out the way they want it to be. Or they're afraid to paint because or they think afraid, they can't do it. Exactly. Somebody's just, told them. Just get out there and do it. Right. Just it's just paint. Yep. There's nothing. It's just There's paint. no lives along the line. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you're a doctor, I would say maybe don't adopt that philosophy, but... <laughs> well, no, they can paint, too. Oh, well, I'm just saying, you know, they can't, like, you know, just give it your best effort. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We all fail sometimes. Well, no, that's it's probably right. not. Yeah, maybe probably not. Probably not. <laughs> so we'll adjust that. Yeah. <laughs> Doctors and engineers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure the It doesn't engineer. apply to everybody. Right, right. <laughs> Let's just be clear. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get my uh, quarter-inch blender here. I didn't have it in my list, but I, I'm just realizing it's the one I need. All right, so I'm done pretty much with the barn, I think. Um, my windows are a little wonky, but I'm not going to worry about it. If I had more time, I would do it, but we're getting close to two hours here, and I'm just going to quit. Well, my head, and just add a little extra snow to the tops of this. I'm just wiping that off there. Um, just using the bright white. This is a clean, dry brush, so I haven't picked up any of that pink water. <laughs> and I'm gonna stipple, Let's scrape in some bright white in there. Okay, there we go. Got any glitter in there? I don't. Why were you looking for glitter on here? Well, you say you have some glitter from your tree. Oh, no, I don't there. have any glitter. I'm going 
going to kind of make mess up this outline here so it's kind of not just a straight line, kind of give it a little body. Same thing here, get a little pretty thick with the paint here, going pretty thick because I need it to be able to cover the red. If I don't have it thick enough, it's just going to see through, you don't want that. Ooh, look at that against that side. Oh, I've got that path there I'm covering, but we can leave the suggestion of it. Okay, so I'm putting that on there pretty thick, and then I'm going to just take the bottom of it and pull that paint off. scraping on the canvas there. That's what you want to hear. I'm just putting that paint on and then just scraping it out so it's fading out. There we go. Nice. And I can go back in with a little bit of that blue. Pretty good. Let's bladder this and be done. We call it a night. And we have to share our uh, our spoils. What spoils? Our Bobby Dazzlers. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got some fun stuff. All right, and we're gonna have pink snow here. I'm not going fresh water, but the the zinc white is already pretty thin, so it's not gonna tint too badly. Ooh, look at that nice snow. This zinc white being already thinned out and makes such great splatters. So if I've got an area where I'm just like, mm, I don't really love that, I'm just going to put more snow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Those windows are getting a lot of snow. <laughs> Artist trick. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Those windows line up? I can't tell. There's snow in the way. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Let's get my Q-tip. I'm going to do some bigger ones. Oh, what was that? Cotton swab. Cotton swab. I picked up some dark color there. I don't want... I am going to use the titanium white here, too. Because this is so light here, it's not really showing up very well. There we go. Just a few extra big ones. You can leave these out if you don't like them. That's Totally up to you. You don't have to add the snow. I feel like I took all that time on my barn and now I'm just covering everything with snow. We'll just leave it off. You're painting. Your rules. You need to make t-shirts like that too. You're painting your rules. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. 
I'm cold just looking at this. <laughs> and it was cold today. We're going to get some snow tonight, possibly, in our... Uh -huh. Maybe some snow Maybe. Definitely the northern part of the state is expecting snows. So... Alrighty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so from Deidre Pup, she said she sent us some Barnell Sweet Creations. I have no idea what's in there, so Mark's going to have to open it. So thank you, Deidre. And from Julia Villacorta, she sent me, she made these for her family. Look at that. She made, she painted my painting, and then she um, made little coasters, and she sent me some. So thank you, Vill Julia. That was really sweet. Mm -hmm. I love those. And then from Bonnie, she sent us a beautiful, Bonnie Geary sent us a beautiful Christmas card. Thank you, Bonnie. Oh, let's see what Deidre's snacks are. Oh, you should have been snacking on those during the show. What are you, what are you doing over there? Well, it gets, oh, cookies. What? Oh, my. Chocolate covered cookies. Looks like Oreos. Yum. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I like I like the colors with a little bit of the blue. I hope you guys did too. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Um, give it a thumbs up. Um, yeah, if you want to see more videos, of more bonus videos, more advanced videos like the ones we showed you earlier um, that we did this month, and we have. If you sign up. Um, you get all of the old videos too. So we have two years, three week, three years on Patreon worth of bonus videos um, that are not available on YouTube um, that are only available on you, on Patreon too. So um, anyhow, let me check that out. Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Go to my website, thankfulart.com to sign up for our newsletter. So um, you never miss a miss a painting we send out a weekly it's not spammy we just send it out once a week to let you know what we've what we're working on sometimes you get some family photos in there lots of pictures of the dog we pretty much a new picture of <laughs> Fitzpickle every week <laughs> and uh yeah and your inf on. yeah and your information goes no further than us right yes yeah so it's not shared with anybody no. so no nope. No, just to kind of keep up. And, you know, YouTube doesn't always share our videos with you. If you haven't, like, watched us for a couple weeks and then uh, and have watched other videos, and then uh, it kind of sometimes will drop off your feed. So getting on the newsletter list will just kind of assure that you get to see what we're <laughs> working on. Yeah. Anyhow. All right. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us again. Uh, hope you stay warm tonight if it's snowing in your area. And uh, one more video of 2020. We're going to be painting a deer on Saturday. So hope you join us for that. All right. We'll see you then. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>